189. One was for, born in Darnell Army Hospital in Fort Hood. The other one was born here in Houston. We have a grandson, Jordan uh, C. Ramos. He was born last year. But the most important thing that happened in my life is I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in 1986. That's my best decision, my second best decision, marrying this woman right here. Work experience, uh, I worked with the payables department in, uh, back home in Puerto Rico. You know, it's real difficult to get a job once you're out of college unless you have someone that could help you, a mentor. But when you don't have a mentor, you have to apply, send resumes and all that. So normally what kids end up is working with the government. So we work with the government at early life and we work with the government at the end of our life. But I ended up a, a junior accountant job but then I got a really good raise because of this woman that's right here, because of you. Worked for R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company in San Juan. I was an inventory accountant, and I duplicated my salary because of her uncle. <laughs> 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 she didn't know that, but her uncle, actually, when you know someone that works in that particular industry, you're better off because that person can recommend you. And there's a couple of hurdles that you could just go over. No longer do you have a set of applications as thick, it's just two or three, because they know you and they'll recommend you, and if you fail, then you fail the uncle. But, well, I didn't fail the uncle, right? <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> After that, I got a, uh, I got a mail. <laughs> Previous to that, I had gone to the field artillery school and did so good that I'd sent an application in, and then almost a year later, they accepted me as a second lieutenant officer reporting to Fort Hood, Texas. And from there, I went and visited these wonderful places. Fort Hood, Fort Sill, Boots Bach, Dutchland, Fort Bliss, and those are all from first lieutenant to captain. So I, did, I love Germany. Germany was real fun. Uh, here's a field artillery school. That's Snow Hall. That's in Lawton, Oklahoma. Here's some soldiers knowing their skills. A soldier needs to know how to shoot. You need to know how to, if you're a basketball player, you need to know how to shoot those two pointers and three pointers. The soldiers need to really know how to shoot because if we go to war and don't know how to shoot, we're in trouble, right? You didn't know how to, how to shoot, right? Because you were an air, you were expert? Mendoza was a, is an Aggie and uh, he also went to a, a program at, there in A&M. Uh, <clears throat> graduated top 10% field artillery cannon battery, but this is not because I'm smart. I'm going to tell you one, one thing. You don't have to be smart to be top 10%. You just need to know who to get aligned with. I got aligned with, through the Commandant, which was a Marine colonel, aligned me with a number two student. And he was number two, I was number four or five, but I ended up number 10. So there was like over 130 students who were West Pointers, good officers, uh, Aggies, you know, uh, MIT, ended number 10%, but it wasn't because of me. It was because who I aligned myself. And I believe if, if kids, if you can align them with the right type of environment, they could excel. Uh, and you just tell them from up front, you know, this relationship you have with this person is no good for you. You need to be with this individual, and it'll, it'll carry you up. That allowed me to go on active duty for three and a half years. Uh, these were the challenges I had. Since I wasn't that smart, I had to study from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, constantly <laughs> so I could retain stuff. Uh, there was a lot of materials I had to go through, tactics, maintenance, fire direction, leadership, doctrine, and discipline. Uh, those are the places I was uh, stationed. Here's the physical challenges. Uh, I had respiratory allergies, and I still have them. I need to take uh, those uh, Allegra's, and if I don't take that, I could, have, I could be real miserable. Uh, <laughs> and also, uh, my daughter was born with a uh, medical difficulty, Stephanie. This was very challenging for Ines and myself uh, when she was born with a Pierre Robin syndrome. I'd like for you to talk one minute about that, honey. Because I want you to give honor to you. Just talk the challenges you had when our daughter, you found out our daughter had that uh, Pierrot Bean syndrome. 
I'll sit down too. <clears throat> It's, uh, it's quite a challenge when you, you see yourself, expecting your first child. Your parents are far away. You're by yourself. When you, when you marry a military man, you have to learn to live by yourself. You have to learn to entertain yourself a lot. You get your friends, you take ceramic classes, and you, know, you <laughs> have to make the best that you can because you have to support. This is a career. And uh, it's a noble career. It's, it's a hard thing for, for families. It, it, can, it really can be really hard. But when our daughter, Stephanie, was born, full term, uh, seven pounds, seven ounces, 19 and a half inches long, she couldn't do very well. So she was taken away from me, and I developed a fever. And of course, you have a fever, you cannot get close to your child. Two days after she was born, the doctor comes in and says, okay, she's having difficult because her soft palate didn't develop, didn't close, which meant that she will, she didn't learn how to take a bottle to suck. She couldn't do that because that would mean <coughs> the connection with the soft palate will go directly to her respiratory system and she will inhale milk, she will choke on it. Pierre-Robin syndrome, uh, her lower jaw was small, didn't develop far out enough to accommodate, to give the space for the tongue to lay down, to rest, which as a consequence, she will move her tongue and it will get stuck on that hole that didn't close up. So she ended up being taken away from us. She was born in Fort Hood, Danau, and she was taken to San Antonio. I had to stay at the hospital almost a week extra because I, I got an infection. So it required for us to travel three, almost three and a half hours from where we were living to visit Stephanie at the hospital. She was in intensive care for the newborn babies. And it's really hard for a new mother, 23 years old, and they have this. It was a, a, the hospital is a very old building. And for order for me to <coughs> reach my baby, to see my baby, I had to go to this long, room and the room had side to side babies. There were babies that were small enough that the doctor would have to pick the little child and put it in his hand and he used a special stethoscope that looked like a pen, like a thick pen. There were babies that they had to do transfusion and they had this little bag with blood, you little, little tiny bag to change the blood. There were babies that were born without a brain, and they just were waiting for the baby to die. There was a baby that he had, uh, he was born with a series of obstructions to his digestive system, and uh, 